Hi everyone, it's Brenda Quintana here. I'm live from my backyard today. We'll go inside in a moment, but I thought we would start outside because it's such a gorgeous day. And as I was looking outside today, I was looking at all the greens in nature. Like we've got dark greens, light greens, yellow greens, blue greens, all sorts of different kinds of greens. And my card today is, um, a lemon lime twist card and I don't know if you guys have seen this new stamp pad in the catalog called lemon lime twist and it's one of our 2017 2019 in colors and the first time I saw it I did not like this color at all it was just kind of a yucky color to me and I have grown to really love it. In fact, I just realized, I don't know if you can see the piece of my chair back here. It's actually in Lemon Lime Twist, um, but I liked it for the outdoors. I just was not so keen on it for cards. And what I have found with this color is that it works really well as a pop for some of our darker colors. Um, so it goes really well with a lot of different things. And it's really refreshing and new. and. Good morning, Catherine. Um, so anyway, so today there's lots of activity going on. There's a plane overhead. I've got our next door neighbor is um, they're pouring. They built their they tore down their old house and they're building a completely new house. And today they are pouring. They've got the framing up and everything. They're pouring the basement basically. So there's uh, cement mixers coming in and out today. So you'll hear those in the background and stuff. Good morning, Monica, and good morning, Janine. Um, so anyway, uh, today is Casing Tuesday, as many of you know, because you join me every week. And what we do is we take a card out of the catalog, out of the any one of the current catalogs. Right now, we just have the annual catalog. And um, by, by we pick, um, either Kalina or I pick the card of the week. So it's a, a specific card in the catalog. And then we, we post it on our Casing Tuesday Facebook group and we all recreate the same card. So we try and use it as our starting point and then we do different things with it. You know, we sometimes change out our stamp set or the colors or whatever. It usually ends up resembling the original card. So that's kind of the idea so that we, we work off of one card and um, we all are recreating it. So it kind of just makes it fun to see what everyone does with it. This week, I noticed that Catalina and I, we both use Lemon Lime Twist. I've got it upside down. We both did cards in Lemon Lime Twist, so that was kind of funny because it's like when you uh, join a friend, you go out for coffee, and you end up both wearing the same color shirt. That's kind of how I felt today when uh, I saw Catalina's card, um, that we both wore the same shirt uh, to Casing Tuesday. So um, I, don't, I don't have a Lemon Lime Twist shirt. Maybe I need to go go find a lemon lime twist shirt um, to to wear on uh, days when I wear do a lemon lime twist card but anyway I've been blah blah blahing I'm going to um, I'm gonna take you on a walk to the craft room now if you get motion sick I'm gonna warn you I'm gonna be moving so close your eyes for a moment while I walk over to the craft room so you don't get sick okay just give me a second I'm walking and talking and we're moving inside. I find it really hard to stamp outside. I don't know about you guys, but there's always a bit of a breeze and there's um, bugs and little bits of debris and stuff flying around. So I do like to craft indoors. So I'm just going to walk inside to my craft room. Just give me a little second. I'm putting my little thing in its holder. Flipping it around. Okay. Okay, I'm still not set yet, so if you have your eyes closed, don't open them yet. Just give me a second. All right, you can open your eyes. We are no longer in motion. Okay. Um, hello to everyone that, that joined. Um, 
uh, Cindy Lee joined, Grace joined, uh, Joyce just joined. Welcome everyone. If I missed you, I'm sorry. The thing um, scrolls and I look down every once in a while to see um, what everyone is, is posting. Um, if you ever have a question for me, please post it in the comments or um, I will come back after the Facebook Live and answer anything that I missed. And if I catch it live, I'll answer it live if I can. So anyway, let me scoot this over. Today, Casing Tuesday card is this card on page eight of the annual catalog. And this card um, is actually done from one of our kits. I believe it's the embossing kit that is available right now. So what I did with it was I... I didn't want to do a greeting like in this card, which I could have done. I have some big stamps that would have um, worked really well, but I decided to do an image instead and no greeting on the front. So this card will have to have its greeting on the inside. But um, then uh, see, it's just a completely lemon lime twist overload card, but I love it. It's so fresh and spring like and, and happy. Um, so, you know, you can do, let me see if I can put the cards side by side. This layout is great um, for lots of things. You can do a word or you can do an image. So this was Catalina's pick and I really like it. I think you guys will be able to work well with it. So if you're not already on our Casing Tuesday Facebook group, I will post that link in um, this the description of this live video. And afterwards you can go and click on it and ask to join our group and either Catalina or I will approve you. And then you'll be able to join in. You'll You'll be able to lurk and see what we do, um, see that everyone that posts, or you can post your own card, which I hope you will do because that's what really makes it fun. Um, so, okay, let us let me show you how I did this card. So I used the only thing, the main ingredient that I used was the bike ride bundle, and that consists of the bike ride stamp set and the called build a bike framelits and I think this is really um, something that you need to buy together there's some framelits and stamp sets that work well on their own but I don't think the framelits are standalone at all you could theoretically use this um, bike ride set alone um, I have done a card I'll show you um, how I did it so you wouldn't have to use the framelits but the framelits make it nice so that if you want to cut out any of the images you can make things pop right out of the card so this is one that I would recommend getting um, as a bundle together and when you get a bundle you can save 10% over buying the items individually um, and you can do that um, if you don't have a demonstrator and um, you want to purchase them just go to my blog qbsquest.com and somewhere on there you'll see shop now or click here or whatever and you can um, go ahead and get these products so what I did I'll just show you really quickly this one I kind of did a combination between stamping and stamping and die cutting so there is a way to do this thing completely die cut so it's very dimensional I only did it partly dimensional because I thought it might be a little bit easier there is also a way to do it completely stamping. So if you wanted to do it completely stamping, this is the layer that you would do. I did um, smoky slate on this top layer here. For this card, if you're gonna do it completely stamping, I would, I would match a dark color like basic gray and use it to stamp on top. Um, in this case, you would stamp your frame first and then add the wheels afterwards and then add your colored elements afterwards because the colored elements are all separate pieces. So you could actually do those rims and the seat. You can change out colors. You could, don't have to do them all in one color. Good morning, Mary Kay. And good morning, Janie. Um, oh, and uh, Mary Mary says that it's uh, very humid in Maryland, in Maryland, and it's humid here too, but nothing compared to the South when we live down there. So that's one option. If you want to do complete stamping, um, you can just stamp it all on one card. And then the the option 
that I did was partial. So if you're doing partial, you have to give yourself um, some lining up marks. So that's what I'll, I did, and I'll show you how to do that. And then the other way to do it is to do it completely die cut. So this bike, if you want, you can pop it up on dimensionals and you can pop the dog up on dimensionals because each piece of this bike, the frame and the wheels, they can be stamped and cut out. So you can have a bike that, you know, pops right right off of your page. And um, this little dog right here also can be completely um, stamped and cut out. To save time though, it's easier to do some of the elements right on the page. So I'm gonna show you how I did this card with kind of a combination of the two. So <clears throat> the first thing that I like to start off when I'm doing that is I want to do my frame. So I've got a scrap piece of cardstock here and I'm going to take, I don't know if I cleaned that, let me just give it a quick scrub. I use basic gray last because I was experimenting to see if I could stamp the bike um, completely on um, um, one piece. Hello Janet uh, from Northern Alberta, Canada. Um, I love Canada. That's where I was born and I'm, I'm from British Columbia. So I'm actually originally well, live, lived closer uh, to you, Janet, but uh, oh, and Laura from Massachusetts. Hi, Laura. I'm, I'm in Boston right now. You may know that. And so we're, we're very close um, in, in distance. So I am going to stamp this bike frame first, and I'm gonna use Smoky Slate. I'm going to ink up this bike frame, and I'm just going to stamp it. This, I'm using Thick Whisper White because I feel like it, it will handle a little bit better if it's popped up on dimensionals. So you just stamp that. Then you can go in and do your little elements. So I'm gonna use my Lemon Lime Twist and I'm going to, so there's three pieces that you need to add color to. If you would like, you've got your handles, the seat, and you've got your pedal. So let's start with the pedal. And the trick with this stamp set is lining up. So if you have trouble lining things up, um, this is a stamp set that might be a little bit more complicated for you, so you'll wanna practice using it. So I'm just hovering over my pedal I'm kind of twisting it a little bit and making sure it looks lined up and then I'm going to stamp it. Now, you might notice that I'm just a wee bit off here. I've got a solution for that. Okay, I'm going to grab, this is my lemon lime twist marker and this comes in a, a five pack with all the new in color markers. So it's it's not a big deal, it's just a little bit off, but you can go in and just hit the white spot there and it, you can you can basically fix it, you know, if you, you're a little bit off. And then you can, these are the handlebars. So again, I'm gonna hover over top and I'm just gonna wait until I can kind of see a frame over top. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the seat right here. And I'll hover over top and then stamp it down. So now we need to die cut this. And you know, I like to use my magnetic platform for this. And let me just move these out of the way for a second. So they're not in the way. I'm gonna put this back. This here. Move some things out of the way. Let me roll this out. And um, I need my frame, which is this piece right here. And you're just gonna line this up over top. The magnetic platform helps you keep your piece in place while you're getting your second cutting plate. And when you place it on top, it just kind of helps it stay in place. All right. So the frame piece is cut, and that's the only thing I'm going to die cut with this card. Like I said, you could die cut the entire thing if you wanted to. There is a circle in this um, framelit set that cuts out the wheels. There is this framelit here that also cuts out the dogs, if you would prefer. 
So now what we need to do is we need to, because I'm doing partial stamping on here, I need to line things up because I need to stamp my wheels on here. So I've got a centering ruler. If you don't have a centering ruler, no biggie. Um, the nice thing about a centering ruler is I know that the second line down here is an inch um, down. So when I line this up on the edge of my cardstock, I'll know I'm going an inch up. But first, let me tell you what size this piece of cardstock is. Oh, good morning, Tracy from Australia. Nice to have you here. We've got people from Canada, the US and Australia. Oh, and Europe too, because Janie is from Belgium. I think she's from Belgium. If you're not from Belgium, let me know, um, JD, because I, I was like, I know you're from um, Europe, um, continental Europe, but I'm drawing a blank right now to make sure. So this piece right here is five and a half inches by two and three quarter inches. So I'm going to make a line one inch up on my cardstock, just a light pencil line like this. Um, so this is one inch. So if you have a regular ruler, just make yourself a mark one inch up and draw your little line. Then we're going to make a mark one inch over and we're going to make a mark three and one eighth inch over. So the distance from the edge to here is one inch and the distance in between the two bike wheels is two and one eighth inches. So if you're making marks along the line, you're going to make a uh, mark at the one inch and the three and one eighths inch. So just remember your bike distance here has to be two and one eighths inch if you're going to do this. So if you're positioning it elsewhere, just make sure you have a line with two and one eighths inch in between, just so you know. I'm repeating that several times because that's the key thing here. So then I'm going to make just a line to help me line up my wheels that comes straight across so um so i have a cross to put my spokes in and it helps me line this up okay denmark darn it i was close denmark genie ah okay i'll we'll remember that next time I, I was thinking belgium and then denmark's just a little bit further up sorry okay so now i've got my wheel i've got my basic gray and I'm going to open it up. And now I can use the spokes of this wheel to line up. I can put it right in the crosshairs. So I'll, it's hard to see probably on camera, but I'll hold it up in a second. So you can see I've got my um, spokes right along the crosshairs of that pencil line. And then let me stamp this. And then, the moment of truth will be, does it line up with a bike frame? So here's my second one. And you can see I used it again on the crosshairs. It was really easy to line up. So here's the moment of truth. Will it line up? Will it line up? Do, 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 do. Yes. See, it lines up really well. But we have to stamp one more thing before we can do the gluing on there. I need my Lemon Lime Twist ink pad back. And this is the rim for your wheel, okay? So um, one thing that I did with this rim, it did have a little bit of photopolymer around the edge. And I trimmed it off as close to the stamped image as possible because it will make lining up a little bit easier. I was having a little bit trouble lining this one up straight. It still takes a little practice. So, you know, you, you sometimes there's a stamp set or something you like to use and you need to practice using it. Take yourself a big piece of computer paper, uh, eight and a half by 11, just practice. So it's pretty good. I. It's hard to do it on camera because I can't get as close to my image without sticking my head right in to the image. So that one was a little better. You can see how my rim was a little bit too close to the wheel, but to be honest, probably no one will even pay attention, but it helps if you trim around the stamp a little bit better, and it helps if you can get your head a little bit closer to the image when you're stamping, not like me on the camera here. So then what you'll want to do is you'll want to erase these pencil lines because, you know, no one wants to see those on a card, right? So just get rid of them real quick. Use a white eraser 
use a good eraser because you know you don't want um like pencil erase lines that just does not look good so you can choose if you want to you could use um, some mini dimensionals to pop this up I'm actually just going to use glue a lot of the cards that I um, give out I send in the mail and it's nice if I can make them not quite as bulky so I'm gonna put some glue on the back of here this is Tombow my favorite go-to glue once you stick something on with Tombow, it usually never comes off again, which is the idea. And you can stick it down like that. So then we just need to stamp our little puppy, our dog. And I was a little worried about, there was a sample in the catalog with the dog on the, the back rack. I don't know. I just felt a little bit worried for that little dog that, you know, it might actually fall off the bike, the you know, the stamped bike, I don't know. So I had to put the dog on the ground next to the bike. Maybe I should put a behind the bike because I don't want him to get run over, but I wanted him facing in, so that's what I did. There are three stamps that make up the dog. We've got an outline, the inside, and then the scarf. So you're gonna start with the outside, the outline. And um, I use the soft suede ink pad for that. And you're just going to stamp or ink it up. You can kind of see it a little bit better now, right? And you just can stamp that right next to the bike. And then we'll use the crumb cake ink pad to stamp the inside. Make it a little lighter. And this one, again, you're going to take a little moment and make sure it is lined up. Just twist it a little bit until you think it looks good and then stamp it and then we need our lemon lime twist ink pad which kind of goes back to the whole theme of the card and you can just ink up your little scarf and hover it over the scarf outline and then just stamp it down like that so now the dog matches the bike and you know a nice kind of theme going on right there and so then you're going to need just a couple of things to finish off this card. So we need a card base and I'm using the fabulous lemon lime cardstock and I've cut a half sheet of cardstock. So a half sheet is eight and a half inches by five and a half inches in the U.S. And then I scored it in half at the four and a quarter inch mark. Then I folded it and I used my bone folder to smooth down that fold. I used, this is a piece of designer series paper from, you might recognize it now, from the Eastern Palace designer series paper pack. And I use this fun lemon lime twist pattern, just a really simple pattern. This piece is four and a half by three and a half. And we'll just take a little bit of Tombow and glue that down on the card base. I just like to center it. That's the easiest thing to do and then we'll take our uh, front panel here and we'll also glue this down because the last thing we want to do is add our ribbon to it so um, this piece again I'll just center it on the card like that then we need a piece of ribbon and I've cut this piece around 17 18 inches maybe 16 inches will do it depends how good you are at tying things with short ends you know you can go shorter if you're good at it or longer if you need more things to hang on to this is our lemon lime twist ombre ribbon and I wasn't sure if I would like this ribbon because I we've had some ombre ribbons in the past but I think they've been a little thicker and this one's a really nice size I let me see this one give you the width the width the width the width um, the width is a quarter inch so it's a nice size for cards and it it just looks really good if you're using lemon lime um, as as an element on your card it comes in some other colors too so now that I love the lemon lime twist ombre ribbon I will be buying it in the other colors too because it's a great um, ribbon so I'm just gonna tie this on my card 
make sure it's straight on the inside. You know, just take a quick peek, make sure it's straight. Then I'm going to give it the first little knot and bring it down, make sure my ribbon is lined up because I don't want it crooked because then it might be too slack. So the one thing I like to do is I like to use a pair of locking tweezers to hold down my knot while I'm tying. And I just got these, um, I got these at the uh, a craft store that had a beading section and they had a set of tweezers and this is a set of locking tweezers. So when you squeeze it, it opens. When you let go, it closes. So I know I use this on my tutorials a lot. This is probably one of the only non-Stampin' Up! products that I use, but it's uh, a really good thing to have if you want to tie a knot and just let it sit there for a moment, right? And then you can, you know, play with the ends and get them just right. So I'm just going to do my second knot and I'm going to kind of pull it closed like that. So, you know, that really helps get that knot nice and tight to the cardstock without being too tight. And then you can take some scissors and you can just angle cut it. You can V cut it, whatever you want, and trim off the ends like that. And there's the card. It It's not a hard card to do. The only thing, you know, with this card is that this one, I've got everything lined up. If you want to do the whole thing stamped down, you can do it. You're just going to have to do your bike frame in the same color as your wheels. Otherwise, it might look a little, little funny. So I'm glad you like the card, everyone. Um, and then um, if you don't want to mess with lining everything up on a piece like this, remember you can die cut it. So this card can really be done a few different ways. And this is a great layout. Um, so for this Casing Tuesday um, card, if you want to join in, let me flip, let me grab my chair, flip myself around just a second. All right, hi. Okay, I'm back. So um, if you want to join us, um, make sure you check the description of this video. Give me a few minutes because I need to um, load up. Um, like type everything back into to the description. Um, I'll also provide you with a link to my blog if you want to look at the supplies that I use for this card. I do a visual supply list so you can click on anything and it will take you um, on the link will take you directly to the Stampin' Up! store and in the Stampin' Up! store they have more details about the product if you're interested in a certain product including the price. Sometimes they have dimensions, Some you know they just and they'll have photos of, of the product as well. So um, if you want to go in and do that, what else do I need to tell you? Um, if you have questions about the card, um, go ahead and, and post them afterwards. I will look at that. Um, I have all the dimensions on my blog as well on, on the blog post today. Um, and that's about it. So if you want to join our Facing Tuesday uh, Casing Tuesday Facebook group, just please go ahead and um, join, um, click the join button and then we will um, uh, invite you to our group and you can um, join us and um, you can lurk for a while if you want, but we're, we're pretty friendly over there. So, you know, we really, we don't bite. Um, so please feel free to, to jump right in and start casing. You can case our current card selection or you can go back and see some of the other cards that we've cased and you can you're welcome to post those as well um so anyway i hope you guys all have a great day i um i see jackie joined us hello um and i'm sorry we're we're leaving already right now um but this this is going to post afterwards so you can go back and watch it from the beginning you can watch how I uh, did this card and if you um, have any questions afterwards please go ahead and, and post it. I'll also post this to um, YouTube so it will be there as a reference for afterwards. So I hope wherever you are today that the sun is shining and that you get some time to craft. So have a great day everyone and thank you so much for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.